Starting things off, we do have splinters. Basically, this is going to be a pretty interesting mod that allows you to break down doors in Fallout 4. Yes, you heard me right. You're now going to take your bare fist or, well, your end of your weapon and slam it against the door a few times and suddenly it will smash into a million itty bitty pieces. Yes, I know I did no intro to this video, but do you really need me to tell you what video you're watching? I feel like you guys kind of got that covered at this point. Regardless, this is a pretty cool mod. There's not too many practical applications. You'll probably find these doors maybe in some of the existing buildings. It does work on all wood doors, including the ones for Nuka World and Far Harbor. You could always kind of have a John Rambo style break down the door, shoot everyone down, which can be extremely satisfying and maybe tick a little place in your heart. But at the end of the day, there isn't a huge amount of functionality. Otherwise, you would just be hitting E. That's the only difference between this mod of Vanilla Fallout 4. But again, if you want that real immersive factor where you could actually break down things or at least one thing that you could in real life probably, maybe actually, I don't know, some doors are kind of thick and tough to break. It's a cool mod, definitely something worth downloading, even just for the funny factor, if nothing else else. So we do have Torch and Lantern. This is going to be another mod by M or M150. He's been producing a ton of really cool and interesting content as of late. What this one's going to do is add in two different things. Some lanterns that you can attach to your player model. These are going to be equipped as armor pieces. Although if you are using the pit pad, you're going to have to change the biped slot of that as they do conflict. But it's really easy. Just go in the settings, click one button, and you're good to go. And more or less, these lanterns now on your character are going to hook into your pit boy light. So the lantern will glow now instead of your pit boy. Really enhancing that immersion factor. I mean, where does the light come out of a pit pad? That doesn't really make much sense. But I think what's even a little bit cooler is the torch weapon this does add in. Basically, it's going to be a little torch. You could run around and illuminate the area around you. You could smack things with it too. I particularly like smacking bugs with it. It just feels like I'm really going back to my caveman roots. Again, it's a really simple mod, but I think it's a pretty cool one. It's one that I overlooked as in never seeing in the past. So we have a really cool mod. This is going to be called VTO Redux. VTO standing for Vertical Takeoff Outpost. It's going to be a mod by PC Doug that effectively creates a mobile player home. The settlement system in Fallout 4 is really cool, but having to kind of interconnect all your settlements and worry about what is stored where is kind of annoying. So put really simply, what this mod is going to create is a little object you can place down at one settlement, load all your things in there, go in there, and live your life as you want to, but then for a cost, transport it to other settlements around the map. And thus we have the vertical vertical takeoff outpost. Now, as I mentioned, this is a really cool mod, but everything here comes at a cost. You have to find the schematics on how to build this. You have to build some of the base stations at different settlements, as well as the object itself to kind of live in. And even further, there are fuel and maintenance costs to transport this. It definitely is something to be used in the middle to maybe later game, but I love that. I love the way this is implemented into the game. It's not as simple as, oh, here for five steel, you could build this thing and travel all across the world. There's actually a cost, but a huge benefit to this. It's something that I've personally been using a bit in my personal save game and I've been having a ton of fun with it. It really is just a lot more satisfying than having to think, all right, let me fast travel to Red Rocket, then go get the gun at Castle, then the power armor at Spectacle Island. It just really simplifies things. You have one concise thing, but you could still have your own settlements and travel from one settlement to another. It really is one of the cooler mods for Fallout 4 that we had as of late. And I think if you don't download it, you're really missing out. So this one's pretty interesting, and it's honestly something I've just never downloaded. On all of my playthroughs of Fallout 4, I have used Red Rocket as my home base settlement. It just naturally fits with me, it's one of the first settlements you get, and I don't know, I just kind of like the structure and setting it does have. Well, maybe you want to have a proper player home at that place. You could still build your own settlement, but what Rockin' Red Rocket is going to do is actually make it so the gas station interior aspect of Red Rocket is now going to be a proper player home. You're going to be able to go inside, have a bed, have a kitchen, have all the amenities you do want. This is going to be one of Eleanor player home mods, although it's one of her older ones, but that definitely has a certain quality to it. It is a really high quality mod. There's a ton of kind of appropriate clutter. As I always say, it looks like you are living in this place, not like it's a pristine or untouched location. But again, one of the big reasons I like this is I always use Red Rocket. I always build settlements there and I never really take advantage of the interior aspects. I normally have a few crafting tables and maybe a bed, but this mod has all of that and much, much more. It also just kind of gives you your own little private quarters on the inside if you'd like that. This mod might not be for everyone, but again, it really is just an extremely high quality mod and something that I will be personally using going forward. So last, but certainly not least, we do have Dog Metal. What this is going to do is add in a few new dogs into Fallout 4, and these are going to be robot dog companions. They look really cool. Whoever did the model and texture work on this definitely did a top-notch job. They really do look like what a robot dog would look like, or at least what I picture it like in my head. But in addition, one of the even cooler parts is all these have their own sets of armors you can equip to them. Again, there's going to be three to start off. Each have their own kind of robotic number name. But then you can assign a power armor and some different wolf and demon armors to them to customize them to your needs. 
mods. It really is just a cool mod. I know a lot of people love dogs. A lot of people use dog meat. Well, maybe you're kind of tired of using a flesh and blood dog. There's definitely downsides. With this mod, you can get past that and find the true benefits that do come with robotics, most notably carry weight and speed. And honestly, it's just an interesting mod to mix it up. There's not a ton of companion mods out there, and I really like the way this one looks. And in addition, I really do like some of the armors it does bring forward. I just think they're a great addition to the game. That's pretty much going to wrap it up for this episode. I know this one's going to be a little bit on the shorter side, but that's just the way things work sometimes. As always, again, I thank you guys for watching. I do hope you enjoyed, and I hope to see you all next time. Later!